My name is Tim Huffman, and I will be your instructor for COM 453, Training and Development. This brief introductory video will go over the text, the activities, and some of the policies that are going to be uh, used throughout this course. But first, what is training and development? Training is a process where you show someone how to do a particular thing, and development is how you grow someone or encourage their growth uh, for further texts, uh, further tasks on in life. Training plus development, that's uh, what this class is about. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the texts. The first and uh, most obvious text is your actual textbook called Training and Development by B.B. Modit and Roach. It's going to be the primary source of reading. Make sure you get this, this book. Um, we'll read a couple of chapters from it a week. The second form of texts are going to be uh, downloaded videos and other materials from Blackboard. Uh, I would also like you to get your hands on an APA style guide. Everything that you do in this class is going to use the APA style from the discussion postings to the activities that, uh, excuse me, to the assignments that you're going to turn in. Uh, so at least find an online source of uh, APA material or get your hands on an actual book. Lastly, the fourth text is going to be an actual organization. So through the process of this class, you're going to study what a real organization needs uh, as far as training. And one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to look at an organization, <coughs> excuse me, and you're going to read from that organization and draw insight on how to train and how the process of training works. So that's the fourth text, your, uh, your book, things that you download, the APA style guide, and the actual organization. Next are the activities that you're going to engage in. You can also think of this as assignments. So first is that we're going to create an electronic classroom environment through the use of discussion boards. Uh, you'll be expected to read and think and write about those things that you read and thought about. Um, You'll also be expected to read the posts of other people and respond to those posts um, in a way that creates discussion, hence the discussion board. So that's the first. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to take quizzes, right? So this is the class. You'll be held accountable for learning certain things. And the information from the quizzes will be drawn from the lectures, from the reading, and from the discussion board. Uh, they're timed quizzes, pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, at the end of every week, uh, there will be a content quiz about all of the stuff that you learned up to that point. There will also be an introductory quiz during the first week to, to kind of get you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, to get you uh, trained or uh, at least exposed to how online test taking works. Uh, it's not worth a lot of points, it's real straightforward, uh, but it will just kind of get everybody used to it. So thirdly, as far as activities, uh, is you're going to do uh, a set of actual assignments um, and it's going to, they're all going to build up to a final presentation and uh, portfolio at the end. So you'll pick an organization, you'll write about it, you'll find ways that, you'll find ways that other people have analyzed the training needs of organizations like yours and you'll write about that. And then you'll adopt those general ways of figuring out what organizations need to learn to your specific organization, then you'll use that to find out what that particular organization actually needs to learn. Then knowing what they need to learn, you'll think about the training processes that we've talked about, and you'll craft an actual training program for that organization, and then you'll present that to me, wrap it up in a portfolio, um, and it'll all, uh, it'll all be good. Um, so let's move to policies. You can, of course, find all the policies in the uh, syllabus, which is downloadable uh, online. Uh, but there were a couple that I just wanted to draw our attention to because I find them particularly important. So first, get your work done and get it done quickly. In the ordinary 15-week semester, you can kind of blow off the first five weeks. Probably aren't any tests assigned. There may, may not be any papers. There might not be any homework. There might be no work the first five weeks. Unfortunately, if you blow off the first five weeks in a five-week course, you'll have blown off the whole course. So of course, there is a policy on 
late work, but more important than the late work policy is the simple fact that if you don't do stuff, it'll all start piling up really quickly. And in a class like this, everything is kind of built on the thing before it. And so you can't really jump in at the third week and start doing week three work because week two and week one work have prepared you for week three work. So get your stuff done and get it done quickly. Otherwise, you'll be screwed. Uh, the second thing is that I would like the writing style that we use on Blackboard and in electronic uh, uh, email communications between us to be professional. Now, by professional, I don't mean boring. Um, you know, I have a sense of humor, and I can be punchy sometimes. And uh, you, so you can be provocative, and you can, um, you know, act, be funny at times. That's fine. Um, but there are all kinds of different online spaces, and some of them. Uh, use different grammars and, and different things are appropriate. So on Facebook, when updating a message or when sending a text, uh, you use abbreviations, you don't necessarily write incomplete sentences, and that's fine. That's totally appropriate. However, in this class, since training and development is so closely related to the business and professional world, I think that this is a great chance for us to practice our professional writing. Because much of what you're going to learn in this class is going to prepare you for that world. And so we might as well practice the writing for that world also. Uh, lastly, thirdly, do not cheat. Uh, it will break my little heart uh, if you cheat. Um, so just don't. For the sake of your grade, don't. It's kind of scary how much information I can pull off Blackboard about your use, whether or not you've downloaded stuff, um, how long you look at particular things. Um, so just kind of assume that I can figure out whether or not you're cheating uh, and just skip it. Uh, I've tried to make the workload real reasonable uh, and I've tried to make the assignments as clear as possible. So you won't need to cheat in order to get an A. Uh, you just need to do the work um, and do it right. So I would like to end uh, with a reflection. Um, and it is a story about elephants. And that may seem a little weird, um, but I think that you'll understand. So our start, the story starts in the St. Louis Zoo. The St. Louis Zoo had four elephants, and uh, they were all um, raised by trainers um, and brought to the zoo as adults. Um, so none of these elephants had ever had any experience in the wild. So you've got four elephants, one's a boy, one's a girl, and eventually you have a pregnant elephant. That doesn't take a lot of training to figure out, right? Um, so a pregnant elephant is a big deal, right? Uh, if you've never, if you're not an elephant, you wouldn't get this. But um, elephant being pregnant means that the views of the elephant place in the zoo kind of spikes up, and there are more visitors to the zoo. More stuff is getting sold at the gift shop. There are press releases. Suddenly, reporters are interviewing all of the handlers and zoologists and doctors uh, who are going to be involved in the process. It's pretty exciting, right? Baby elephant on the way. So the actual day of the birth comes, uh, all kinds of spectators are there, uh, the, the, the news is there, uh, it's blown up, right? So, big moment happens. Elephant goes into labor, has the baby, uh, doctors catch the baby and are starting to treat it, da da da. Um, the elephant mother turns around and looks at her baby. What do you think her first response is? Now think. This elephant has never seen a baby. It's never seen a pregnant elephant. It's never seen an elephant deliver. What does she do? Well, I'll tell you. She attacks her child. The zoo, uh, zookeepers freak out. The handlers are, are, are pulling the baby away. They're holding the mom back. Uh, everything is chaos. Uh, and at first, they can't figure out what's going on. Why is she attacking her, her child? Are elephants? Like humans, like most animals, aren't they supposed to have some kind of nurturing uh, instinct for their children? Well, it's true, and they do, right? Uh, it's instinct and hormones that cause a mother to lactate, to create milk, and things like that. That's not training. But in a world where you had never seen a child, wouldn't pregnancy seem like a cancer growing inside you? Wouldn't uh, the birth feel like you were dying? Uh, and wouldn't the child, all covered in, uh, in a goo, it would look a little like an alien. It would be scary if you 
and to engage in childbirth uh, with no training. A lot of what we do, but also importantly, what we think and who we are, is the process of ongoing training. Now, training happens at a lot of levels. Some of it is cultural training or societal, right? We're learning things from broad messages about the society we live in. Some of it is organizational. We learn it in groups or the memberships that we identify with. And some of it is interpersonal. It happens in our relationships or with our families. But all the while, we are being trained by society, by our organizations, and by our relationships. So I encourage you to be curious about this training process. Uh, and let's start with asking this question. How am, how am I being trained right now? Ask yourself that question. How am I being trained? Obviously, I'm a trainer because I'm your teacher, right? But there are other things. Are you being trained at your work? Are you being trained in your relationships by your boyfriend or girlfriend? Are you being trained by your parents or your kids? How am I being trained? And then flip that question. How am I training other people? Who are the people in my life that um, I am teaching them how to do a specific thing or broadening their general ability to be a human. Uh, as I said before, much of who we are, much of what we do, and much of even what we think of as what it means to be uh, a son or a daughter or a mother or a father or a brother or a sister, much of what it means to be a citizen or an employee or a co-worker or a student, much of what it means to be is the process of training and that people have gone before and shown us what uh, the right steps are, what the right process is, what um, the right ways of being are. Now, of these three levels, the societal, organizational, individual, this class is going to focus a lot on organizational training, namely what groups do to cultivate their members. But I think at this early stage of the game, it's worth asking broadly, who is training us? Who are they training us to be? And who are we training? Who are we training them to be? So uh, we'll uh, end there. Uh, I encourage you to read over the syllabus and uh, touch up on the text, activities, and policies. Uh, and kind of familiar, so familiarize yourself with the Blackboard site. Click around so there aren't any uh, surprises. It's set up there on the left-hand side in a chronological format. Um, so just kind of click through um, and look at the calendar also and see that basically it's a day-by-day -day process. Uh, kind of one or two things every day um, for the next five weeks. Uh, I look forward to meeting you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, but welcome to the course.